check everything. And then when Captain Chris comes in, like every flight, no matter what pilot, I got everything ready, but I verify everything. Did you do the walk around? We, do the, we both do the walk around. You know, do you verify this? We go through everything. Do you see this? Is this the number verified? We do all that because it's going to bite you if you don't do it. Okay, but yet, when I get off the airplane, why can't I operate at that level in life? Why, why do we change when we leave our profession the excellence that the, the corporation or the company requires of you? Why do we not apply that to our life? Southwest Airlines had the quality, the excellence. And that caused me to be on time, to be early, to put in extra time. I would stay on purpose and donate. I've donated thousands and thousands of dollars to Southwest Airlines in time that they didn't pay me for. Why? Because I believed in the company. I believed in what I was doing enough that I would invest in it because I worked for God. I didn't work for them. And I knew that Paul said, when you work, work as unto the Lord, because I knew that I could, I, I, it was an offering. It was just as good as putting that money in an offering plate. Mm-hmm. When, when a person, I, I remember a, lady, a girl that I was witnessing to, and um, she noticed my watch. Uh, it was like my favorite watch, but every time I get a fa- watch, it's my favorite watch. But don't, please don't buy me any watches, because I can only wear one, and it's the one I have to wear when I fly, because it shows my oxygen level. And I got to have that one on, especially when we're in the fighter jet. So no more watches. But the bottom line was that I say that because every time I tell this story, I get watches. And <laughs> is she said, I love your watch. She said, my dad had that watch. And she, he said, when my mom died and we needed money, he went and sold his watch so he could pay the bills. And I was already unstrapping it and handing it to her. And I said, take that home and give it to your dad. She goes, no way. I go, yes, it's not mine. I, sa- I even told her, I said, when I got this watch, the Lord said, don't like it too much because it's not yours. You're just a carrier. He, t- he tells me that. When I get stuff, when I get gifts, he says, enjoy, enjoy it while you have it. Because this is, you're just a UPS guy. I'm serious. Okay. When I, when I retired, I got a letter from her. She said, I don't know if you remember me, but I heard you retired. I didn't get to say goodbye. But I just want to tell you that you changed my life. And you changed my dad's life by what you did. See, your message is who you are. And there's a substance that goes with your giving. It's, it's, a, it's, it's beyond our dimension, but it's, it's true. Okay, so the entanglement is that things, once they start to entwine with each other, they, they choose a direction that is opposite because they pirouette. So particles, when they, in, they entangle, one chooses one direction and one chooses the other direction automatically. It doesn't matter which one chooses what, they end up pirouetting. Okay, so this is the whole basis for, for everything. The, all the substances we know of is when we look at atoms, we look at, I don't want to turn this into a science class because I'll, I don't know where everybody is. I don't want to insult you, but I also don't want to embarrass you. The bottom line is, is I apologize to all the physicists in here because I'm dicing this pretty bad, but I'm also apologizing to those who don't even know what a particle is or could care less. So just, let's go to Bucky's, you know, they just want to get... <laughs> Let's get some fudge, you know, and we'll do some entanglement with, a, with fudge, you know. Okay, so, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you have everybody in different places. The bottom line is this, is that you are attached to Yahweh, to God. Okay, but what that means is everything that Yahweh thought of you when he breathed you in your mother's womb is attached with that. So everything you would ever need is attached to you in that package of destiny. So, that you'd never retire. You, you never, like, you don't, you, you don't necessarily slow down. There might be reconfiguring, there might be directional 
change. There might be focus. There might be things that change. But the bottom line is, is that, first of all, everybody's listening, right? Yes. I got a news flash for you. There's always going to be somebody that's better than you at anything you do. Anything you do, there's always going to be somebody better. So just forget about it. So when you play golf, enjoy it. And if you don't enjoy it, give it to someone else. Okay, do things that satisfy you in a way that causes you to get toward what you need to do. For me, I have certain things I got to disengage. Like as soon as I'm done here, I got to run to the room and disengage because my flesh and my brain is cooking under the anointing. This happens every time. I, am like crack, I can hear like crackling going on. The anointing is so strong. And like anybody that comes up here right now, they're not going to be able to stand up here. I, like I tell my staff, when they come up here, they cannot stand. They go, how do you do this? I, I've gotten used to it, but it's not, it's not something you want to get used to. Okay, so that flow, that river is for everybody. That's not just for me. That is not because I'm here. That's because Yahweh's here. Okay, the reason why Yahweh's here is because he gets the first seat. And if he needs my help, he'll call on me. I just happen to be called. Okay, so I'm up here and I am telling you, I am speaking to you and telling you things that is positioning you to receive your miracle. The miracle is something that is so bright that when you look back on your life, you won't be able to see anything except this big burst of light. There'll be nothing else. And it will go so fast. Your life from now on will go so fast because the reference points are not going to be tangible anymore. Okay, so you're not going to be able to say, okay, didn't I just hear this? Didn't I just meet you? And then you find out, no, you had a dream about this person. You haven't met them yet, but in a dream you did. And you start to not be able to coincide between the realms. That's spooky to Einstein. But to a Christian, it is not spooky at all. Because you're making a connection with the one who started it. But he actually started it because I was there. J just so you know, look right at me. I am not lying. I was at the throne room. And where I was formed, where I was breathed out of, I was at the spot. I was at the spot where Jesus said, I breathed you into your mother's womb. And now you're standing before me at the very spot that I breathed you out. You reported back to me. And I had to give an account. At the very spot. And this is what he said. He said, walk into me. And I walked right into his eyes and inside of him. And I watched him think of me and then form me and then breathe me out. And I went to my mother's womb. And, my, and she wasn't even married. <laughs> then he let me come back out and I still standing right in front of him. And he goes, you know what? You turned out just like I thought of you that day. You're perfect. I'm like, you're the only person that's ever said that to me. <laughs> um, if I gave you some emails, would you like email some people? <laughs> no, think about, uh, think about our creator and think about how much he's invested in us. And he's so fine with you about things. And we have gotten it mixed up because we've gotten entangled with the wrong people, with the wrong things. And we are entertained, but we're really contained. Wow. We're, we're trapped. If you don't believe me, try to leave your phone. Because it will call you. And it'll end up in your back pocket somehow. Somehow, like why? Because see, Satan knows he's going to try to entangle you. And get, grab your attention away from the one who created you. And the only thing that matters is what comes out of Jesus' mouth right now. What, what does Jesus say about you? What does he say about the situation you're in right now? Okay, so has, has the Holy Spirit been able to change you to where you do a do uncommon things? 
Because the first class that you have in the miracle, in the signs and wonders class, is he will start to make you think uncommon things. He will start to make you think things that are out of the box on purpose because you're in training, but you're really being deprogrammed. So he's telling you, I want you to think these thoughts. And, and it's better than Disney Channel because you're, it's creative. It's a creative part of you, okay? And, and all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, then he goes, okay, go do that. I'm like, can I practice first? You know, like. <laughs> okay, so the perfect example of this I always use. We live near the Grand Canyon. There's no picture, no painting is ever going to tell you what the Grand Canyon is like until you stand right before it. There's, not, there's no way, there's no way. But see, Jehovah is even greater than that. Right? Okay, so if I train you on a two by four, so you know a two by four, they're not two by four anymore because, you know, the, the God of this world has made it like three by two now. So, but there, there used to be two by fours. Now they're like, they get, they get smaller and smaller. Now it doesn't work when you're building a house, you know. Just blame it on the Chinese. <laughs> or Canada, right? It, it would be us, right? Okay, so if I lay out two by fours, end to end, crossed here, and I said, I'll give everyone $1,000 if you can walk across that without touching the floor. I mean, most of you would at least try it, right? Okay, I said, okay. Now, everyone that's done that, congratulations. For a million dollars, I'm gonna put it across the Grand Canyon. You'd walk across the same wood. Okay, and if everything was exactly the same, which it wouldn't be, but if theoretically, I'm trying to show you something about God and about science. Is if you can do it here, you should be able to do it across the Grand Canyon. What's the difference? It's the liability. See, if you do a misstep, it'll cost you more. But if you talk to the tightrope people, they actually practice like a foot above the ground for a year. And they keep up in it. And so everything you see starts at a simpler level with less risk, right? Okay, so I had a buddy... I had a buddy that you would know. He's a world champion, aerobatic champion. He was a friend of mine, and he was a captain at Southwest Airlines. And when he was a nobody, now he's Red Bull and all this stuff. And, and um, he's, he's the number one guy in the world. And he's flying right now. I mean, I just saw him in an air show, uh, you know, online. But he said, hey, can you, um, can you go with me, f fly beside me? He had a pits at the time. It's like a little biplane thing. And he's gone to this other thing. Um, he said, can you just fly in formation with me and get some, some film in your airplane? And this is way back. I mean, this is back in 1989, 90. And um, I said, yeah. And he said, we're going to go down this field. And he said, I, I just need you to film. I'm going to do some of my aerobatics. So I'm going to turn it in to see if I can get into an air show at Miramar. You know? And um, I said, okay. So he said, I need you to lay down on the runway with your camera and I'm gonna come over you and you just snap a picture of me. And I'm like, okay, this is not, no, this is not like. I hope he's not watching. Cause, Cause he did this to me and it's like, it's really not right. So now he's the aerobag champion of the world. But I, I kid you not, he comes down and he's like six foot off the runway and it's, you know, it's an obscure little private place. I say that just to be protected from the FAA, you know, so it's just an obscure little place. And um, I'm like, okay, I think I can handle this. He's going about 180. And I'm like, okay, I got my camera lens. I'm like, okay, 
So if I click it, it's going to take a second. So I'm going to click it like two seconds early. I'm thinking all this stuff. You know what he does? He flips it upside down and he comes over me upside down laughing. And I got a picture of him <laughs> laughing at me. And he's like only this far away from me. And, and my two size 14 shoes are like right here. And he's like upside down in between. It's a perfect photo. And I'm holding it in case I, I, he owes me something. Yeah. Now think about this. Then he goes, okay, I'm going to do this maneuver. And this is going to get me into all the air shows. And I go, what are you going to do? And he goes, well, it's hard to explain, but it's, a, it's something I developed. And so he takes off, he goes with, and he, he goes like this. He flips the airplane in a spin right off takeoff, which nobody would do. And he ends up upright and then he just climbs out. And I go, what did you just do? He said, well, I started three mistakes high for a year and I kept working down. So I said, well, okay. I can't take this anymore. Let's go. So let's. So I said, let's go to the fair. So we were in, in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. So we said, we'll go to the fair. And um, I said, hey, you want to ride this, this ride they have here? He goes, oh, no, that's dangerous. I go, and what you just did isn't dangerous? <laughs> and this is what he said. It, he said, what I do is predictable because I've done it for years. And to look at it, he wouldn't go on a ride because that's dangerous. So how could he say that? And how did he get to where he is today? It's because he became excellent to where it was predictable. Okay, when God tells you to be uncommon and do things outside the box, it's to develop you to where you own a space. You own a territory. He owns a territory. In the world, the corporate world, they call it a brand. But what if God had created you to be that brand that you are? Because that was part of his plan for the time that you live in. Because that is the absolute truth. 